Um, good morning. Um, my name is Olaf, and I've been asked to share some information with you about um, how to um, start a startup and how to get venture capital or, or an investment in your in your startup. Um, before I'm gonna start, I will ask um, the um, heavy loaded room here. <laughs> um, so who? is an entrepreneur or who's going to uh, start a startup or a company, please raise your hand. Okay. Um, what kind of company? Live music. Okay. Okay. And you guys? Okay. So who, who else is going to start a company? I know your company, and you guys. Okay, all right. Music publishing. Okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, raising venture capital. I think that's the topic, um, and um, I'm not going to, let's say, to limit this um, to venture capital raising money in order to start a company. I think that's um, um, the topic of this, um, let's say, presentation. And uh, please, can you take the next slide? Um, so, target partners. Um, we are a venture capital firm located in Munich, and we invest um, in early stage companies. Our we invest in everything what's not wet. So we don't do life science, no pharma, and no biotech investments. And we predominantly invest in German-speaking countries as well as in, in the US. And we are focusing on, on tech startups. So the next um, pet food shop, online store, uh, that's not our, our focus. And we are four owners and four partners. Um, on the very left, that's Kurt, with the sporty haircut. Um, Kurt is a uh, former entrepreneur uh, coming from, um, from, from Canada with the most German name you can imagine, Kurt Müller. <laughs> um, grew up in Chicago and uh, um, started his company in Boston, uh, went public in the 80s, and, um, and then he came to Germany and started Target Partners. Um, next is me, but I will, uh, no. Um, and then Bertolt in the blue uh, sweater um, um, is a physicist by training, PhD at the ETH in, in Zurich, a real tech guy. Waldemar is the fossil um, in, in venture capital in Germany. Um, he's doing this for 30 years, has seen everything in this industry uh, in Germany as well as in, in the United States. And um, that's me the, with, the, with the red polo. Um, I'm a former entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, so I've started a couple of companies. Uh, I've done one IPO um, back in 1999, and then um, um, in another startup, tech startup, which we have sold um, to the United States. And in 2007, I decided to change the sides of the table and join the dark side of the force and became a venture capital investor. Um, so that's Target Partners. We have two associates, and um, that's our team, so uh, very lean and mean. Yeah. If you have questions, um, just ask the question because then we can keep this a little bit more interactive, right? Okay. Uh, next. All right. So um, at first, don't read this. Uh, I will explain it. Um, before we talk about venture capital and how to raise maybe venture capital um, for your company, I think it's important to understand how venture capital work. Uh, how venture capital works and what's our business case. Um, and then maybe it's understandable for you guys um, why a venture capital won't invest in your company or will invest in your company. So it's a little bit of math. Um, let's say our fund, our recent fund, is 100 million. So it's 112 million, but uh, 130 million, but with 100 million, it's easier to calculate. Is 100 million has, has a volume of 100 million, which comes from our own pockets and from the pockets of our investors. If the fund performs very well, um, we should pay back 300 million 
um, within, let's say, 10 up to 14 years. So three times the money in 10 up to 14 years. Then our investors will say, well, these guys performed very well. You will get another, let's say, investment, and then we are able to invest in um, another company, uh, in more companies. So this is our, our main goal, to pay back three times or even more uh, the fund. There are funds in the venture capital industry which have been paid back 10 times or 15 times if you have these uh, so-called unicorns in your portfolio like Google or um, uh, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. Or in Germany now, Zalando, which will go IPO, or they will go IPO um, in Q4 this year. So, and then we invest in 20 companies out of the 100 million. Maybe less, maybe more, but normally so it's the range, 20 companies. And we have between 20 and 30% of each company. Because, you know, if the company is worth, let's say, um, 6 million, we invest 3, then the company is worth 9 million, we have one third. Yeah? So now here's the dangerous part of our business. Um, statistically, 50% of all venture capital backed companies won't make it, so, won't reach the target line um, because the team has some issues or the technology doesn't work, the market is changing, competitors are eating up your market and your customers. So 50% of uh, all venture capital-backed companies won't make it. That means we won't get back the money. That means out of 20, 10 have to pay back our investment three times. So what does it mean? Um, 10 companies, we need 300 million back. We have, in average, 30% shareholding in each company. That means 30% of the 10 companies. If we want to have 300 million, do your own math, we need 1 billion exit valuation of these companies. 1 billion. That means every company, in average, has to have an exit valuation of 100 million. So this is a very tough job, to pick the right companies, to help them, to help and support the entrepreneurs, and, uh, and to find the right exit channel. Because some of them, let's say, will get, will get sold for 10 million or 20 million. So if only one company will get sold for 10 million, the next company has to get sold for 190 million. Um, that's our business model. So it's not easy. And don't think that there's uh, a VC or investor with tons of money. Um, we are on fundraising as well. We are talking to investors worldwide so that they can, can get or can give us money in order to invest in, uh, in German startups. Questions? No? Okay, good. So, um, question is, uh, what, we are, uh, uh, what are we searching for? So what are we looking for um, every day, every week, every month? We see about 1,500 business cases a year. 1,500, that means um, uh, per month 120, per week uh, 40. So 40 cases every week. And um, we are really looking for the next, in the next slide, Big thing. <laughs> yeah. But it's rather complicated to understand what the next big thing is. Um, do you know Spotify, uh, um, um, uh, SoundCloud? So who is using SoundCloud? OK. Can somebody um, give the speech to the end? Because I, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was just a joke. <laughs> because I turned down SoundCloud. So I've seen SoundCloud, uh, the first pitch deck, um, they came to us, we evaluated this deal, we said, great founders, but there's not a case. So we turned it down. Um, we call this the anti-portfolio. All the deals which we haven't done, which we turned down, we call it rejected, 
Um, so it's SoundCloud, for example. It's MySQL. Who knows MySQL? Uh, it's a one billion exit. Um, and this is part of our business as well. So if um, somebody comes to us and said, well, this is my, my idea, this is my, my case, um, it's up to us to understand the entrepreneur, to, let's say, to, to evaluate the market and to, to understand if this can, can it become a big thing. Um, the first idea of SoundCloud, or the first case of SoundCloud, um, was a pure B2B business. Just as an example, because it really fits to this um, Berlin Music Week. It was a pure B2B business, and a friend of mine has a, a very, let's say, I think important um, record label. And I called him and said, um, uh, Musti, um, I have this, call, uh, this, this deal here, should I invest, what do you think? Uh, and he said, Olaf, this is the music industry, don't invest your money because nobody understands what will, go, what will happen in the next years. And if it's B2B, don't do it. If it's consumer, maybe. But SoundCloud was pure B2B, so we rejected. And um, they got money from um, um, Dirty ha uh, Doughty Hansen, and they have done a pivot. Pivot means they changed their business model into a more B2C business model or C2C business model. And then they really reached the tipping point and uh, went through the roof. Uh, good for them, bad for us. But we are happy for these guys because they're really good entrepreneurs. So we are really looking for the next big thing. And, um, and the, the problem is that we don't know what the next big thing is. And um, it's up to the entrepreneurs to, to make us, let's say, or to convince us and to make us understand um, why this idea, you know, this publishing, for example, is the next big thing. And um, so if you're looking for money from an investor, or especially or particularly from a VC, now you know if your business case doesn't show a potential valuation of your company um, north, north of 100 million, don't go to a venture capitalist. Because it's, you're wasting your time and you're wasting my time as well. And if you get rejected from a venture capitalist, don't think that you have a bad case. We are so blonde, nothing against blondes, but we, sometimes we are really dumb because we don't understand it and we don't have the vision and some entrepreneurs are not able to explain the vision even though the case is good. Um, so um, don't feel sad uh, or upset if a VC is turning your case down. Uh, there are various of reasons, and I will come to it. So, uh, next thing, uh, next slide. Yeah, I think this is a good slide. This comes from North America, um, from 2011. A little bit old, but I think the, the numbers are um, more or less correct. In North America, United States, um, there are about 65,000 angel-funded startups in one year. So, startups where a business angel put money into this company between, let's say, $10,000 and $200,000. Um, and only, I think, 1,500 will get a venture capital investment. The rest, whether they don't need a venture capital investment or they won't get it because the selection criteria are so, let's say, precise and, 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 and sometimes tough. So having said this, um, and I'm repeating myself a little bit, 1,500 deals, and which we get into our mailboxes and, uh, or on conferences like this, we invest in four, maybe five deals per year. And um, so and this is, Every VC is doing the same, more or less. Some VCs are doing a little bit spray and pray investments, so they are shooting for 10 or 15 per year, and then they pull the plug after half a year. If uh, the company doesn't work, that's not our style. We are very, let's say, picky, and then we support the companies. Um, so, but this is the ratio. Um, next slide. Um, 
And our main question is, will it get big enough? Yeah. Um, especially if, if we do seed investments, sometimes people come to us with just a PowerPoint presentation and, uh, and an idea. And, uh, so, and then we are talking to them and we're sitting together um, and I'm asking us all the time, can it, can it get big enough, sorry. <laughs> Um, and these are not criteria, but these are the areas we are looking to. Um, market potential, market need, customer benefit, defensible technology, timing, and team. And um, I, will, I will explain a little bit. Team, let's start with the team. There is a more or less um, main question which I've been asked since years. What is more important, the business case, the idea, or the team? Uh, there is no answer. There's really no answer. We have seen teams with perfect business cases, um, good teams, and we have seen bad teams with good uh, or with perfect business cases and ideas, and the other way around. Um, team. Well, here's the answer. It's more or less a marriage which we, let's say, step into. Um, we are going to work with the entrepreneurs, with you, for the next three up to ten years. And on a weekly basis, sometimes in the beginning at the, on, a, on a daily basis, and then later, uh, once a month or once a quarter, we, we're going to meet. If, if both parties don't like each other, um, you shouldn't step into this, let's say, uh, entrepreneur investors marriage, because it's really a very close relationship. And um, um, I found a lot of friends because I raised seven venture rounds as an entrepreneur, and most of the VCs are still friends, really friends, because it's such a very close relationship, and you really learn each other or the, everything about each other. And being now a venture capitalist. Um, working with entrepreneurs, it's the same. Especially when uh, it turned out positive, and after an exit, um, it's, uh, it's very nice. So team is very important. Um, timing, about, it's not about the team, it's about timing. Is the case at the right time now? Or is the market ready? Sometimes a, an idea is too early, sometimes too late. Uh, if it's too early, it takes longer than expected, and uh, it's eating up more money than expected. If it's too late, um, market is gone, maybe, and uh, competition already had a head start. So um, timing is very important. Defensible technology. Well, not every case has a defensible technology, if, especially if it's a platform or an e-commerce shop, which we won't uh, fund. But um, if it's a tech deal, it really has to have a defensible technology, some secret source or um, some, some, some stuff which is not, let's say, as e too easy to copy. Yeah? Understandable? Okay. Um, customer benefit. I've done a mistake in 2005. This was my last startup. Um, it was um, a Linux server for the, the SME market. So I'm a general, uh, in Germany is general dilettant. Um, so I, I, I studied business administration. I can't code, I can't produce anything. Um, I had a very good CTO at my side, or on my side. Um, so we, we, Founded this company in 2005. We got venture capital, seven million in the first round uh, from international VCs. Um, they were keen to invest in our company because we are we were serial entrepreneurs, successful serial entrepreneurs. One year after we uh, got out of the blocks, I figured out that the business model doesn't work. So brilliant technology, very good product. Um, Customer benefits, which were obvious because um, the server was had a better performance, better price performance ratio, and we were competing against Microsoft. But this was 
the problem in the SME market, um, everybody wants to have Microsoft. And no sales rep in this world is trying to, um, to sell you know, a startup brand against Microsoft. So after one year, we figured out, okay, this won't work. I went back to the, uh, to the investors and said, we have to turn around, we have to do a pivot, pull the plug in the United States, which uh, um, the company was located in Boston. And um, so and my investors told me, no, no, um, just put more money into the market. Um, end of the story is, uh, or was, we agreed to disagree and I've got fired as a, as a founding CEO from the investors. So um, I learned the flip side of the metal working with investors. Um, with investors without, let's say, with, or with no entrepreneurial background. But as an entrepreneur, I thought the customer benefit is obvious. Better, cheaper, faster. But the customer benefit um, with the, I, I ignored the customer benefit, the label of Microsoft. Um, you know, a no-brainer no to buy this stuff and not to buy a startup brand. Um, so I, I just ignored it and uh, this was a big mistake. Uh, market need and market potential. Market potential is very important in order to figure out if this stuff can really, or can get big. Uh, next slide, please. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I already um, mentioned this. Um, if your business case is not big enough and if you think, well, okay, no, it won't reach 100 million, um, um, don't, don't go to VCs. Um, um, save your time and my time. Uh, maybe we can have a drink at, at, at these conferences, but um, um, ask yourself, do you really need venture capital? Uh, are you ready to take venture capital? Um, and if you don't need venture capital, don't take it. It's not a, it's not a label, a premium label to, to say, well, okay, I've got venture capital. Sometimes it's, it's a burden because you don't know um, each particular investment manager from the VC funds. Some of them are really um, complicated. Um, next slide. <laughs> yeah, um, do you know Sand Hill Road? Who, who, who understands Sand Hill Road? Nobody? Okay, so Sand Hill Road is in California. It's in... Um, 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 in Menlo Park, Menlo Park, Menlo Park is maybe a mile away from Palo Alto, and if you go to Sand Hill Road, um, just Google it, Sand Hill Road on Wikipedia, there are every every U.S. venture capitalist is on Central Ho Sand Hill Road. Everybody, it's like you know, if all the VCs in Germany would, let's say. Uh, be in this building. In the United States, you have a couple, of, let's say, 10 times or maybe 100 times more VCs compared to Germany. The important ones are on Sand Hill Road in Menlo Park. And that's why um, that's the exit. Are you really ready to, for a VC round? Um, but I'm, um, I have asked this question before. So next slide, please. Okay, yeah. Um, that's the venture capital process. Um, that's our, let's say, our workbench. Is that right? Right English? Workbench? Uh, so, all the process. As I've said, about 1,500 deals. Um, like today, this morning, I had a meeting uh, with the team. They pitched pretty good. Um, it, the deal will go into our deal database, um, our deal flow database, and um, we have a follow-up ratio of about 15%. So um, um, with 15%, we take a phone call. Um, most of the deals are just coming in uh, by email or by referrals. Um, and um, then we take a phone call, ask some questions, and, um, and then we ask the question, the deal fit uh, to our focus, and it seems interesting. About 15%. The rest is just sorry, we are not the right partner. Yeah. And then we start an internal due diligence uh, or market evaluation, uh, so to call. Um, so we are checking the market, 
asking ourselves about competition, um, meeting the team, um, checking out who's in the team, um, the technology, IP, finance, legal, and so on and so forth. This takes some time. Um, it's, um, part of it is, is desk research, so we're sitting at our desks um, and taking phone calls, reading stuff in the internet about this uh, market or about competitors, and we're taking a lot of phone calls. Um, so if this, in, if this is a case which we are really interested, we are digging very deep into this market and into the entire ecosystem of this particular company. And, um, and then, after a couple of weeks, we will take an investment decision to say, well, okay, um, I think we are the right partner. And then we are exchanging terms. So each particular entrepreneur or team has, a, has an idea about valuation, how much money they want to raise, uh, how much dilution they want to take, and um, and this is you know structure the transaction, um, talking about terms. Um, should I just uh, explain a bit these these terms? Okay. Um, so if you are if you are um, founding a company, a German GmbH or a, BH or a US Inc., um, let's say, take a GmbH, and you are the only owner of this company, you have 100% of the shareholdings. If you come to an investor and say, well, this is my case, this is my company, I want to raise one million. I need one million in order to get, get out of the blocks and get started. And we say, well, it's interesting, okay, we could invest one million. Then it's the question on which valuation of the company we are going to invest. If we would say, well, okay, the company is worth two million, and we will put in one million, after the investment round, the company is worth three million. Yeah? So two million pre-money, one million investment, three million post-money. Good, good question. Yeah. Good question. So the question is how to estimate or calculate or measure or um, yeah the, the valuation, the pre-money valuation of a company. There is no single answer. Um, if it's really early, a seed valuation. So it's just the product is running on PowerPoint. One founder team is not uh, complete. It's more or less. It's just the idea. How you you can't you can't value the the let's say the company. It's more okay. We need one million, and for us, it's very important that the entrepreneurs are incentiv incentivized incentivized um, so that they earn let's say the biggest part of the company uh, own the biggest part of the company. So um, normally I would say, well, the company is worth one million. I put in one million, then each of us has 50 million, uh, 50 percent. Uh, but it's not motivating for you, right? So to just give away half of your company, and you know, in the next years you have to go through additional funding rounds, and at the end you have just 10 percent of your company. So this is one, let's say, perspective on this on this question: um, how much money the company will need in the next years, and how big the dilution of the, uh, of the founder in the first funding round should be. Yeah? If the company is older, um, more matured, you have, let's say, revenue, then the, the, the valuation can be measured based on your revenues. If it's a SaaS company, software as a service, for example, B2B, there are some golden rules, um, or in German, Daumenwerte, how to, how to value or evaluate um, a, a SaaS company. For example, it's 100 times monthly recurring revenue. Uh, if you have a monthly recurring revenue, subscription-based of 10,000, it's not big, but yeah, it's times 100, 1 million. Uh, or if, if it's 100,000 times um, 
um, times 100, it's 10 million valuation, and so on and so forth. And then there are peer group analysis. If, you're, uh, if you are comparable or similar to another company which got funded, um, this is a peer group analysis. And if this company was worth this, this amount, then maybe your company is worth the same amount, and so on and so forth. But it's very, and most important, it's supply and demand. I think supply and demand, Nachfrage und Angebot, yeah? Um, if there are two investors want to invest in your company, you're the lucky guy. So you can play a little bit. Say, well, no, the other one um, is valuing, uh, valuating my company on five million, and you are valuating on three million, so I will work with the other one. Don't overdo this, yeah? <laughs> Um, because it, you, might lo uh, you might lose both of them because people are talking in this industry. <laughs> so, and then if the terms are done, um, on a, let's say on back on the envelope, um, everything will be written down in a term sheet. A term sheet is um, some kind of um, very thin contract. And after the term sheet is signed, the real contract will be drafted. And the real contract is... a uh, pain in the ass, to be honest, um, because it's uh, 40 pages, maybe 60 pages. Um, are there lawyers in the room? No, okay. The lawyers are ruling this, this industry somehow um, because they are, let's say, they have some kind of, um, of game, lawyer against lawyer, who is smarter, who is adding more terms to the contract, blah, 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 and it's getting more expensive and more expensive and more complicated but it's needed. Uh, I hate it because we have to pay the lawyers, you have to pay the lawyers. Um, well, the contracts needs to be drafted. And during the contract drafting, we are still doing due diligence. So we'll come to your company, open up the hood, look into your technology, blah, blah, blah. And, and then there's signature day, signing day with a big party, closing party, um, after the money's on the bank account. Um, and, um, and then it follow, uh, the investment management is, is following. That means the, the next three, up to seven, maybe 10 years. Um, we are taking board seats, so in your Aufsichtsrat, in your advisory board. Um, we support, we do sometimes um, business development because we have a network in, in particular industries. Um, so that's really um, the funding process, and it, it takes two up to six months. Yeah. So if you need money in one month, you are too late. Normally, VCs don't sign um, NDAs. Um, if you insist, we sign it, but if we would sign 1,500 NDAs, uh, I think we won't be allowed to say a single word on these stages, for example. Sure, we have uh, Chinese walls. We never, ever open up, let's say, um, pitch decks uh, in order to share it with other people. But um, the, the amount of information we are getting here every year is uh, some kind of, let's say, ammunition for, for you as well, because we can judge what is good, what is bad. And that's why it's rather complicated to sign NDAs. We, we, do, NDA, we do sign NDAs if um, the entrepreneur is really insisting, but we, we, are, we are not company builders. We invest in companies, and um, we can't copy technology or something like this. Uh, and if we wouldn't tell you, we would, let's say, kick ourselves out, out of the market. If we would lie or if we would cheat, um, you know, next day the industry or the, the, the German industry would know it and uh, everybody would say, would say, well, don't file, don't send your, um, your, your business case to target partners because they are going to, um, to copy it and to, to spread the word. So, no. It's the, the, 
this business from our side is um, based on trust. Yeah. But it's a good question, absolutely. Question? To this um, process? No? Okay. I didn't get the, the question quite right. Again, please. Yeah. No, we are, we are only investing out of one fund. We have different funds, but um, um, that's normal. A venture firm has one active fund, uh, active for investing. And, uh, or maybe they have let's say two funds, one for life science, one for tech. But um, it's, um, it's not possible that we have two funds investing in the same industry at the same time. So we, have, we are currently raising our third fund. We are investing out of our second fund now. Other questions to this process? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I am. I, if you don't mind and... Um, 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 Maybe I'm not in the position, but I would like to give some advices. <laughs> so, um, next slide. Yeah, first, investment. Po uh, so, what kind of investor uh, should you, let's say, pick? First, read read the, the website. Uh, we are getting. Um, we are getting business cases uh, from about drugs, you know, medical drugs, um, and uh, and um, life science, biotech. And on the first side or website, it's it's stated we invest in tech companies, uh, not in healthcare, not in biotech. So read the website of the venture capitalist. My first advice. Does the investor have experience in your market and in your technology? So check the portfolio. Yeah? Look at the portfolio. Who has invested in similar companies like my company? Because this, company, uh, this investor should have a network. Um, does the fund have enough um, money? Yeah? Um, we call it dry powder. Ask the investment manager. So how much money is left in your fund? My company needs in the next three years or four years 10 million. Um, and if this is an investor who has only 1 million or 2 million left, don't talk to him. Um, do your own due diligence. What do other startups and entrepreneurs say about this investor? Call them. If you're in, in, the, in the process, in the due diligence process, it's your due diligence process as well. Um, Call other startups and ask, is it an asshole or not? Can you work with this guy? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah? Um, by the way, you're taping this, yeah? OK. Please cut the. <laughs> um, uh, will other syndicate partners work together with, with the investor? So if, um, if your capital um, requirement is rather high, it might be good to have a syndicate. A syndicate is um, two investors. Uh, for example, that you might need two investors because the capital requirement is too big for one investor. And then um, double check if other investors would work with this investor you are talking to. Because he is maybe he, he is or she is blacklisted. Um, we, we do have some investors we wouldn't step into a syndicate uh, with them because we have done this one time and we wouldn't do this another time because the investor is shaky, um, doesn't stand for his word. Is that right? Doesn't stand for his word? Okay. Um, okay, <laughs> and relationship. Can you fall in love with each other? Yeah. Remember, five up to ten years, or three up to ten years, working together. Um, it's a very important question. Next slide, please. Yeah. Um, on, on these conferences, there are sometimes um, wannabe entrepreneurs who say, yeah, I'm going to start a startup, and, uh, and I have an idea, and I'm working on this. And, uh, and then I'm asking, so which company are you working for? Yeah, Siemens. OK. Or oh, BMW. 
Um, yeah, but I'm, 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 I'm really on, on, my, on my way to start the startup. Yeah? But I want to try a little bit. And as an entrepreneur, as a former entrepreneur, I can tell you, do or do not. Yeah? If you have an idea, do it. Or, do, or don't, just don't. But don't try it. And um, this person told, uh, mentioned this, yeah. <laughs> Uh, next slide. Um, do you know Hernando Cortez? Do you know the story about this burn the ships? No? Who, who, who knows the story? You know the story? Yeah. Okay. Should I explain or want you explain? Exactly. And this is a common phrase in the Silicon Valley. Does the entrepreneur burn, or did the entrepreneur burn the ships, his own ships? So is he really committed? If I say he, I mean she as well. Uh, if he's, is, is he really committed to, to run this company? Or is there still a ship in, in order to sail back to Siemens or BMW? Yeah? Um, burn the ships. Um, next one. Yeah, stay foolish and hungry. Everybody knows it. Next one. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> if you if you remember Groupon, Groupon, do you remember? So I think in Germany we had forty um, about forty copycats of Groupon. Two of them got sold. Uh, one to Google and one to Groupon itself. And if you read these stories on TechCrunch, on uh, VentureBeat, um, and you feel sometimes, uh, I felt in, in the past, let's say, ashamed, or, or I was asking myself what, I'm, what, I, what I've done wrong because my company doesn't have this huge success, um, think about it. In a tornado, even a pig can fly. I've been there, I've got the t-shirt in 1999, at the, in the bubble time, we went public with a bullshit business case. We, at first we got venture capital, then we went public. And, you know, we looked into the tail mirror and said, okay, in 1999 everybody was able to do this, because it was a tornado and tornadoes even pick and fly. Um, so we have done this in, in the nuclear winter in 2002 again, and uh, with success, so there was no tornado. Um, what I'm going to say is um, don't feel ashamed or don't, don't get un, uh, demotivated from big stories on TechCrunch. Uh, think about is there a tornado or is it a real world? Yeah? What's, uh, what's going on? I think um, YouTube was a, uh, was a good example. Yeah? Got sold, um, uh, got bought by, by Google for one point something million, a billion. Um, and then they're really, let's say, involved. Next one. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if this is readable. Uh, life is short, build stuff that matters. It's my, my last advice. Um, double check and double think before you start your, your, uh, your company and, and your product. Uh, is it really stuff that matters? Or is it just an idea from you? Talk to a lot of people, talk to customers, and, um, and don't waste your time, your lifetime, uh, and others as well. Um, next one. That's it. Questions? If you need mic. No questions. <laughs> Thank you. Next few years, uh, what is uh, your focus in terms of, of uh, investment, and what is your interest here in, in uh, the music week? Uh, <laughs> okay, um, so uh, uh, let me translate this question. Uh, every venture capitalist has been asked a lot of times, "What is the next big thing?" Honestly, if I would know it, I wouldn't sit here. I would uh, start a company aiming for the next big thing. 
I, I strongly believe that only the entrepreneurs know what the next big thing is, even though sometimes they don't even know it, but they're just doing it. Um, and uh, our um, goal and our, let's say, task is to, to find the next big thing because an entrepreneur is after it. Yeah? But we are not the creative guys. Um, our focus is um, technology, software. Um, it, you know, back in 2001, 2002, we have invested in silicon, for example. We wouldn't do this now because this market is sometimes uh, somehow is over. Would we invest in social networks? No. <laughs> um, but um, there are, let's say, particular verticals um, or horizontal um, technology stacks which we are interested in. Yeah. Um, would we invest in um, hit-driven business, for example, in games? Uh, no. Why a hit-driven business? Um, you can't. Let's say you can't um, project and you can't. You can't plan whether this movie or this this song or this game uh, will be a hit. And if it's a hit. Um, what's the lifetime of this game, movie, song? Yeah. Um, maybe it answers your questions. Does it? If not, we are we are very open. Uh, as a v, as an investor, you have to be cu curious, curious, yeah, and open. And, and it's very important to not learn for eternity from the past. You know, especially Waldemar, 30 years of venture capital, he has seen everything. If he would say, well, this never worked, he wouldn't do a single investment. Uh, I think he looked at digital um, document management 10 times in the last 30 years. And we have done an investment a couple of years ago, even though it never worked. It didn't work this time either. <laughs> um, but we, we are still open. <laughs> Yeah. Next question. Hi, um, great presentation, Olaf. Thank you. Um, when you showed your slide, the funding, the, the the funding process on average, when a company approaches you, do they try to raise money for one year, for two years, initially? How far ahead do you need to prepare your business plan? There was a strong echo. Maybe I have to stand here again, please. When a company approaches you. Um, and when you go through the initial assessment and, uh, and the funding process, do, does a company try to raise money for one year, for two years? How far ahead oh, okay. do you need to prepare the budget? Um, again, it depends on. Um, um, there are some clever statements. Um, take the money if you get it, not when you need it. Because you never know if the next Burr Stearns or um, uh, other, let's say, investment banks or other banks go bust and there's a worldwide financial crisis. So if you get the money uh, into your bank account, be happy. Take, take what you can get. <laughs> On the other hand side, if you take too much money at the beginning, your dilution is bigger. So if you say, well, I just need 200 grand in order to get the first prototype out of, let's say, uh, on the market, um, then maybe you, your dilution is very limited if you do a business angel round. Business angel has not necessar necessarily the need to have 20 or 30 percent of the company. A venture capitalist needs in minimum 20 percent, yeah? in minimum, because uh, otherwise there's the, the math behind doesn't work. Um, so various parameters to decide how much money and um, how much money you take and how long you can survive with this money. At the beginning, maybe it's a little bit shorter. In the A round, so it's normal C or business angel round, seed round, A round. Um, the A round, you should have freedom to act for 18 months. Why? Um, what we, what I've shown is that uh, investment round takes six months. So if you close the round with 12 months runway, 
in, in two quarters you have to restart. No, in one quarter you have to restart because you have to go back to the market, talk to people, and then um, the process is going to start, which will take two up to six months. So you're in constant fundraising, and if you're in fundraising, you can't take care of your customers, of your products, and of your employees, and so on and so forth. Yeah. When you talk to... Oh, sorry, uh, okay. to jump in here. Sorry, no. Um, you talked about SoundCloud and um, that um, investment proposal. Um, can you talk a little bit about why you rejected the business-to-business -business model that they presented back then, and also what do you look for in a B2B proposal? Um, let me think about if, if, this, if I can disclose this. I have to be very cryptic. Yeah? Um, so the first idea of SoundCloud was to have it some kind of Dropbox in order to, let's say, throw um, music files on a website of a label. Because I think before it was sent by email or just sent it and so on and so forth. So this was the first idea, and then you have a premium subscription and so on. So what we have done, I don't know when was it, 2009, maybe? Two th yeah, maybe 2009. So um, there was a website called MySpace, maybe you remember. Uh, and, and most of the musicians worldwide uh, were active on MySpace. So MySpace had about, I don't know, eight or nine million musicians. And we have done a statistical, um, what's heißt ein Stichprobe auf Englisch? Stichprobe? Huh? Sample. 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 A we have done a st statistical sample and said, okay, we take out of these eight or nine million musicians, I think two or three hundred, and we check the activity, activity level of these musicians, how many um, new songs uh, were published, and so on and so forth. And then we were calculating, say, if, this, uh, if they are not active, how many active musicians are in this world, and, and, and so on and so forth. So, and we figured out that um, the business of SoundCloud and the musician-to-label business, it's nice, it's, it's good, but it won't get big. Because um, it's, um, um, yeah, we talked to a couple of uh, musicians and, and labels, and they said, yeah, it's nice, but um, would you pay for it? No. Um, and that's why we rejected it. And sorry for asking this question again. Um, you're making me feel bad. <laughs> uh, was it answered this question? Okay. I think was next one. Um, well, I'm just like sort of like thinking. I mean, you've you've also been experienced with um, being an entrepreneur, right? So I mean, when you look for a company, or like when you have a startup that is approaching you with a business plan, and you look at the entrepreneurs, are you looking for um, different trades and like how, for instance, say it's like two or three different. Um, Founders like that they work together very well, or that you have, for instance, one person that's very good concerning sales, another person is very good when it comes to finance. Or what is like the the chemistry that you're looking for? Um, yeah, first of all, uh, chemistry is important. I think um, um, they should. The best thing is if they have known each other for some time, mm -hmm. um, and that they somehow can work together or can. Um, interact with each other, and in, in team meetings, if you if you explore, if you look at people, you, you figure out if there's if there are bad vibes or not. Yeah? Uh, if the interaction is um, is good, quick. If the other person let the, the other person speak without interruption, all these little tiny uh, things. But. Uh, we have done an investment in 2008. It was 2008. We put a couple of millions into this company in two months after we have invested it. Um, we figured out that the management and founder team is on war to each other. And they didn't show this. They really pretended very well. Um, 
And one of the founders was stealing money from the company. In due diligences, you can't find everything. And um, this, was, this was a disaster. Yeah, because, you know, you put money into it, and then one of the founders is taking money out of the company without, let's say, telling anybody. So they're, they're, his co-founders didn't know this. And uh, so we, we found it out. Uh, we figured it out uh, in, a, in a, well, I don't um, So, and coming back to your question, first, um, the chemistry is very important. Second, a coherent or compl complementary team complementary, yeah, yeah. with complementary skills. It's important as well. Um, especially if, if we talk about tech, if there's a very strong tech guy, CTO, um, it's worth a lot. <laughs> and um, the or sales, um, before you hire the first salesperson, the founder is the salesperson because you are spreading out the spirit and the mood and, and all that stuff. And um, yeah, team is very important. Yeah. And um, another question. So what, have you experienced a lot of differences between male and female entrepreneurs? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, yeah, there are differences between male and female people. <laughs> and what would you, yeah, no, no, I mean, no, but I mean, when, when we look at like statistics or like people that are interested in, you know, entrepreneurship in general, you always have like a higher amount of male people to actually yeah, take yeah. the risk, be yeah. on like, which is, for that. which, uh, which I don't understand. Um, in my first career, um, I was in a corporate environment after my studies. And um, the last three years, from 1997 to 1999, I was senior vice president of marketing of an international company. And um, in my marketing division, I had male and female, let's say, uh, department or directors running advertisement department or PR department. And I have to say, well, I, I, I really like to work with female. Um, um, yeah, em em employees, but they were running departments, uh, so they were not that's, um, just employees, because they um, um, they are not they they haven't been that full of testosterone, <laughs> and in, in, in discussions um, you can really let's say stick to the to the matter and not like these um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I never worked with a, found, uh, with a female founder so far, okay. I have to say. Uh, we don't have a single female founder in our portfolio. We have a female CEO, but uh, she wasn't the founder or she isn't the founder. Um, and um, that's why I can't answer this question. Um, in the United States, in these conferences, not especially music conferences, you know, startup conferences, we see much more female entrepreneurs compared to Germany. In Germany, it's a mess. It's really a mess, you know. Um, if they do something, they do a, a Wummelkiste, yeah, um, um, or, you know, um, uh, Julia, Julia Birch, um, uh, Outfittery. Or Amorelli. Yeah, or, or this yeah. one, yeah. So e-commerce. Yeah. Uh, in tech, in real tech, um, yeah. I haven't seen so many uh, female entrepreneurs, which is, I'm sorry about it. Yeah. Okay. okay, thanks. Thank you. So I think we have time only for one question. All right, one, one more question. One more question. Okay. So uh, besides uh, money, do you, can you offer uh, expertise in marketing or anything? Because you know, if if I have a product and I feel okay, this is actually ready for the market, but I just need somebody to use it. So. Um, well, money can help a lot, but you also need some, maybe some, some people knowing about how to do it. Um, so, yes, um, every, more or less every VC says, well, we are giving smart money. Smart money, this is a buzzword, not just money. Um, I've I heard this a lot of time, a lot of times when I was an entrepreneur, and Honestly, I haven't seen it that much. Um, when it comes down to marketing or stuff, stuff like this, 
Um, there are some investors who really, uh, which, yeah, who really understand how to run a company, what kind of next important steps in your HR policy or in your KPIs, in your reporting, uh, um, are necessary. Um, or, but to help you in business development on a daily basis, um, first of all, a VC is not capable to do this and is not allowed to do this. So I'm not allowed to, to go operationally into a company because I will lose my tax status of my entire fund if I'm operational. What we are doing is we are helping in, um, in mainly in HR to get the right people onto the bus. That's the main focus. Yeah? To, uh, to talk to the entrepreneurs, to the CEO, to talk about the team, what kind of talents are missing, um, and, and to, to be a sparring partner, to ask sometimes silly questions, demanding questions, uh, why this pricing, why not this pricing, why this customer, why not this customer, blah, blah, blah. So, um, and, and corporate development as well, some business development, uh, well, I'm going to, to trade shows. Uh, well, I've invested in a gaming company or a game technology company in 2009. The next three years uh, I spent at the GameCon in, in Cologne and um, uh, at the Game Developers Conference in, in San Francisco in order to meet the right people in order to understand the, uh, the industry. So that's what we are doing. Okay. Um, I think that's, um, that's it. Thank you for your attention and for your questions. Thank you.